Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, there is a Rey Skywalker movie in production. It's on the horizon, set to be released in 2026. Lordy, that is a long time. <laughs> And today I'd like to talk to you guys about what I would hope to see in this upcoming Star Wars movie that takes us back to the galaxy far, far away. And right away we can start off with what we know about the film so far. Apparently it's going to revolve around Rey rebuilding the Jedi Order. And really right there is where my hopes start because I would really appreciate seeing Rey change up the Jedi Order from what we've seen from the past generations. Because if the story of Star Wars has tried to teach us anything of, among many other things is to recognize the Jedi's failure due to this adherence to a rigid rule system. A rule system that said that if you fell to the dark side even a little bit you were lost forever and frankly the main point of the original trilogy was to expose that that was always wrong. Yes Vader was lost to the dark side but he was able to be brought back unlike what Yoda, arguably the smartest person in the galaxy, thought was impossible. And strangely, in Luke's time of rebuilding the Jedi Order, he seems to kind of re-adhere to that same dogmatic ideology. And that could be accounted for the fact that he had influence from Jedi of the previous era. But with Rey, she doesn't really have all of that outside influence other than the ancient Jedi text. So what I would really like to see is for her to change things up, take note of the previous failures of the Jedi ideology, and make it more in line with how the Jedi are supposed to be. Peacekeepers of the galaxy who maybe this time finally understand that if you do tap into the dark side or if you do feel yourself getting pulled in by the dark side, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be lost to it forever. You just have to have the ability to recognize there is a point of going too far. And I really think that's the case of what Rey's character was always intended to be because throughout her entire story of the sequel trilogy this is a character that constantly tapped into the dark side or at least behaved in a manner that a dark sider would and completely rejects its temptations. But what I'd also really appreciate seeing is with this new galaxy that's rebuilding itself after all the fighting is said and done with the final order and the memory of the Sith are finally gone for good, at least for now, you never know, is I'd really like to see this galaxy, ironically, as Rey is rebuilding this new Jedi Order, be completely against the idea of the Jedi returning. And this would be arguably the perfect movie to set up that kind of conflict with the galaxy, because at this point, the galaxy has been rendered asunder time and time and time again by Force-sensitive people, more times than not, who were previously trained by the Jedi. And I just frankly would find it completely unrealistic at this point in the Star Wars universe for Rey to be rebuilding the Jedi Order and the rest of the galaxy is just like, yep, you do that. That's exactly what we need right now. I think it would be far more compelling of a story for Rey to be rebuilding the Jedi Order and the governments of the galaxy like call her up and be like, no, we, we're outlawing this. You're not allowed to set this up anywhere in our region of space anymore. Like if you want to go as far from us as humanly possible and rebuild on some backwater planet a billion light years away, you do whatever you want over there. But you're not allowed to set up in our districts anymore and you're not allowed to have your Jedi in our districts anymore. And I can just see the conversation playing out where Rey can be trying to justify the necessity of the Jedi, the need for the Jedi to continue to exist in the galaxy, but really these governments could just counter everything that she has to say. Where Rey could propose the idea that well Jedi are supposed to be peacekeepers of the galaxy, to which the governments could respond with by the end of the events of the prequel era, the Jedi were mostly wiped out. They were no longer longer acting as peacekeepers and guardians of the galaxy because they weren't around as much anymore. So who were the ones taking the fight to the people who were abusing the weak? The resistance, the rebellion, and even if we were to take into account all the surviving Jedi that helped the rebellion during the time of the original trilogy, even if we amassed them all into one supergroup, they never would have accomplished what the rebellion as a collective whole accomplished with just your average Joe people taking on the responsibility and taking the fight to this dictatorship that took control of their galaxy. So if average Joe non-force sensitive people are taking up the responsibility being the protectors of the galaxy, what is the reason, what is the necessity for the Jedi? 
To which Rey could possibly argue that a Jedi's abilities allow them to accomplish a lot more, and they arguably did a better job at being peacekeepers of the galaxy than the New Republic once they reestablished themselves. To which these new governments could argue, yes, but only because we'd spend so much time piecing things back together right before another Force user shows up and sends us all back to the Stone Age. Add on to it all the devastation and destruction of the previous movies, entire planets and billions of people being destroyed at the behest of Force users? This would put Rey in a very uncomfortable situation where she has to justify rebuilding the Jedi in a galaxy that just doesn't want them anymore. Not just them, but just any Force users being trained in this power that has been clearly used to abuse the galaxy more than help it. And all of this could be a reflection of the sequel trilogy, at least in The Last Jedi, where it reflects a bit of Luke's perspective of his desire for the Jedi Order to end. Except the entire issue with that is all those perspectives of that movie of the desire for the Jedi to end are all coming from rather tainted sources, either from the villains who obviously would want the Jedi gone just so they'd be out of their way, and someone who's clearly going through a depressed state but obviously doesn't actually believe in what he says. But we never really get to see a perspective from the people who are affected by these Force users. And really, one of the most amazing scenes of the sequel trilogy is ironically not even in it. It's a deleted scene that I think perfectly illustrates the point. And if you haven't watched it, I'd greatly recommend you look it up and give it a look because it's possibly one of the most compelling things I've ever seen in Star Wars. Because it's one of Luke's lessons to Rey that, that weirdly we'd never get to see in the final cut of the film, where Rey notices this fast approaching craft coming towards the village of people that live on the island with Luke. To which Luke informs her that those are a bunch of marauders that show up to push the locals around a little, steal some of their food, and then take off. Rey, wanting to act as a Jedi, wants to run off and protect the village and kick the marauders' asses. To which Luke tries to stop her and explain to her like, no, 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 listen. If you go and you kick their butts now, you're not always going to be here. That means when they come back, they're gonna come back with more guys, more guns, and even worse worse temper than before. And then they're not just going to push the locals around and steal a little bit of food, they're going to kill people. And all of this is to explain to Rey and give more perspective of Luke's perspective of the Jedi's failures that sometimes you can cause more harm by trying to do good. Which I think I find so compelling because that's just real. It's not just a sentiment that was invented in the sequel trilogy. This is something that's also brought up at times in the Clone Wars animation series where near during the end of the Clone Wars, Ahsoka meets other people who are completely unimpressed with the Jedi because they think they failed in their responsibilities. And to Ahsoka, this is shocking, obviously, because this entire time she's been fighting tooth and nail in these wars across the galaxy, trying to make the galaxy a better place. But to these people, it doesn't matter to them because they're not the ones involved in this. And when the Jedi are off acting as generals for this army, they're not doing their job as these impartial peacekeepers to the rest of the galaxy. And those that would abuse them have come in and ruined their lives because the Jedi aren't there to protect them. Which harkens back to this deleted scene that Luke makes the point of, that Rey is not always going to be around to protect this village. The same way not every Jedi is going to be able to puppy dog guard every settlement in the entire galaxy. Because I think another point that Star Wars has tried to make is that there's just not enough Jedi to be protectors of the entire galaxy. They can't stick to one spot forever. Eventually, they have to move on, which leaves these areas exposed to abuse. And if the bad guys are only gone until the one guy who can stop them is gone, what are they actually achieving? So for Rey to be put in this situation where the galaxy is just collectively like, no, we're not interested in any more Force users. We're not interested in anyone being trained in the Force anymore. We're gonna handle that from now on. We're gonna take on the responsibility of being the protectors of the galaxy. You're not necessary. Really, what could Rey say that could argue the justification of needing the Jedi? And what I would hope is that if this movie was done right and it went in this direction, we could be reintroduced to a new type of overpowered threat to the galaxy that just the common man can't deal with that justifies the need of the Jedi due to their powers, but also Rey reflecting on the past history of the Jedi the same way she did with Luke in the sequel trilogy, where when Luke was explaining the history of the failures of the Jedi, she was very quick to remind them of their successes as well. Yes, the Force has been used to abuse the galaxy, and sometimes the bad grossly outweighs the good, but at the end of the day, it took 
force users. It took people with this power to make the significant blows needed to change the galaxy for the better and to overthrow and defeat these bad people that abuse it. It took a farm boy with these force abilities, with this training in these force abilities to make an impossible shot that destroyed a super weapon that could destroy planets. It took training in the force for Luke to become strong enough to overpower arguably one of, if not the most dangerous man in the galaxy, so he could be put in a position where he reflects on what he is doing and show that individual mercy, which in turn causes that individual to turn back to the light and kill objectively the most evil man in the galaxy. That could not possibly be achieved at the hands of just regular non-force sensitive people. But anyway, those are just my thoughts. I'd love to know yours in the comments below. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you. See ya.